five starts on. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, okay. The key verse for this chapter is Thou, though through thy commandments has made me wise, thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for the, thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. That's Psalm 119, verse 98 to 100. Okay, obviously today we're going to see some of these study helps. Um, I brought a bunch of things, key things, but there's a whole lot more. This is just so you can see a sampling of the different things that are out there and yeah. maybe like. And I found that when I went hunting for a commentary, if you look for a big comment, it's very expensive. Mm. And you really want to know between this one and that one, which one you really want, if you're going to get one, right? So rather than go spend a whole lot of money, I was fortunate because we had a really nice Christian bookstore up in Danbury at the time, and I was able to go look and see what the commentary was like and maybe compare it to another one and I'd pick one out. But uh, having a little bit to see right here is very good. Anyway. I am a person you can talk to about that kind of stuff because I have a lot of stuff. I have like seven commentaries. So, you know, I, I don't use them all the time, or any of them, but or I, any of them. I have them and I can tell you about them. I can tell you this one is a lot of, you know, Amen. talking about the differences between the divisions in the churches, which is old history that isn't it very helpful nowadays. Um, so let's go to the introduction. Bible scholars have written special books that are helpful in studying the Bible. This chapter explains how to use these Bible tools. It is not necessary to have these special books in order to study the Bible. Do not be concerned if you cannot afford or do not have access to them. This course teaches you how to study the Bible yourself. All that is necessary for you to have is a Bible. I also have some special Bibles. Your basic Bible is all you need, but there are Bibles out there that the reference Bibles in particular, they are much more helpful because they reference your scripture to scripture, supporting what it's all about. Okay. Let's see. There's a lot of ways to gain access to different books. With, with things online today, it, it's a lot easier. A lot of pastors are not going to commentary. They're going to online. My fear is the way things are going, especially in this country, you may not be able to get anything good online anymore. You know, end up an underground church or something. Uh, yeah, it's all going to, if you don't have the books, you're out of luck. But that time hasn't hit yet. Bible study tools are important, but they cannot substitute for studying the Bible itself. You should use these tools only after you have done your own study of the word. Consulting a Bible study book before the study, before studying the Bible itself, influences your mind with comments of a man before you have studied the words of God. Those who wrote Bible commentaries and other many, many other study tools obtain the material the way any student can get it from the Bible itself. Okay, we're going to Bible Concordance. Bible Concordance provides an alphabetical listing of the main words in the Bible with immediate context of each word. If you have limited funds with which you to purchase materials, this is the most important tool for Bible study you should be your first choice. Uh, and they talk about the two, two good concordances, Young's Analytical Concordance and Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. Young's Analytical Concordance is also good for subjects, looking up subjects, but Strong's Exhaustive Concordance is really an exhaustive concordance. It has tremendous 
uh, value. It is not just the concordance. It has the Greek and English, the Greek and Hebrew dictionaries in the back. So when you look up a word in Strong's, it'll give you a number to look in the back for that word. And that is very helpful. So it's very helpful to lo locate all references to a word. For example, if you want to study about angels, you can look up the word angel and angels in a concordance. You will find complete listing of each place these words are used in the Bible. This will enable you to look up each reference on the subject. You can also look up names of Bible characters and do biographical studies using a concordance. For example, you can look up the name Moses. It lists all, all of the Bible references to him. Okay, and here you have a chart of the concordance, looking with the word begotten, and you'll see a listing with the letter B for the word begotten for all these different scriptures with the word begotten in it, and it has a scripture reference, and then it has a number for the dictionary in the back. So what I also find this very good about a concordance is if you have a scripture you can't completely remember, and you're trying to think of it, key words you can look up in here and find the verse that you're trying to remember. And that I've used it more for that than anything else, I think. But, okay, number two, locate a specific text. That's just what I was talking about. Uh, perhaps you remember a word or two from the Bible and want to find the verse in the Bible where it was. Um, that is exactly what they did here with the word begotten. Mm -hmm. And to find a meaning of the word, you would use that number at the end of that line. Seth, begotten Seth were 800 years, Genesis 5, 4. That number 3205 would be the Hebrew dictionary because it's Old Testament where you'd find that. And then along with Strong's concordances, I would, if you're going to get into word study, Thompson Chain Reference is wonderful for that. Um, you can go online and look up Thompson Chain Reference, and you'll probably see, be, have the option to see a little video on how to use it. It'll explain how you, if you were to open up a, the Bible and read, let's read one here. Genesis 5, 4. This is really going to be uh, as much um, seeing these books. Yes, I laid out a few strong concordances, which were on the shelves here, if anybody wants to take a peek at one. Genesis 5. Okay, this is a New American Standard. Thompson chain reference. So all the days that Adam lived were 930 years. And, oh, I'm sorry, this is five, four. And the days, then the days of Adam, after he became the father of Seth, were 800 years, and he had other sons and daughters. So in the NASB, it doesn't say begotten. So the King James is your is ideal book for word study because you have it keyed to Strong's. You'll have the same numbers there. Um, in the beginning of the, the column here in Thompson Chain, we'll have a word and a number next to the word, and then also a scripture where you can find the next use of that word. And that makes it great for finding out exactly what they mean with that word. Because every so often you run into something that's said in a way that makes you think and wonder about, you have to find the meaning of that word, you know? Okay. Now, going to page 60, if you look up the number in the Hebrew dictionary in the back of the Strong's, you'll come to this chart right here. This number is 3439. Underneath, you'll see the list of what these numbers stand for. The first one, 34 number nine, 
This is the number by which you find the Greek word in the dictionary, if you're looking it up by number. Two, this is the word written in Greek. Number three, this shows how the word is pronounced in Greek. So it looks like a totally different word. Yeah. Because that's not English there on number two. And then number four is the pronunciation of that word. Number five, this provides the numbers of the root words for the word begotten. So if you're getting deep into the study of the word, then you can find root words related to it and look at other things as well. Number six, this gives the meaning of the word begotten. Number six is actually the definition. <laughs> so, only born, an example, so only begotten son. Now, we took that Strong's. If anybody wants to look at a Strong's or look up a particular verse that you got maybe in the back of your mind where you didn't remember the full verse, anybody can think of one. And we could look it up, and you'd, you'd find the same thing. You'd find a list of places in the word where it is, and that would lead you into the dictionary and the verse you're looking for. This one I'm curious about. Um, exactly when it's like throwing crumbs to the dogs from the table. You speak a little louder. I'm sorry. Throwing crumbs to the dog oh. from the mm -hmm. table. Um, yeah, that's that lady. Um, okay. Um, even the dogs eat of the crumbs, yeah, right. and the greatest they yeah. pay. Yeah. Um, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, and the gospel. Be, yeah, yeah, the gospel. Um, let's see. Crumbs. Crumbs would be a good word to look yeah. at. Could be the version. Crumbs or scraps? Crumbs. Yeah, crumbs. Crumbs. Say crumbs. What I do. This is the most. Why is she. Right. Why does she get to have that blessing and they wouldn't even take a crumbs to the dog and they get to eat? That one always confuses me. Yeah. Yeah. Something else, um, and I don't know if any of you listened to that sheet, but I'm curious if he has written books. Okay, Matthew 15, 27. Dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the table. Yeah. And what do the crumbs represent? That goes yeah. And that word is 55. <laughs> So what I wanted to do is give you a little experience doing this so that it just isn't like, oh, what, what, you know, then you can just pick it up and do it. But we must always read the complete verse right. and not cut it short because that's how they the funk, the natural meaning of the Bible is they don't read the complete yeah, verse the, and follow in context. Yeah, sometimes yeah. more than just the complete yeah. verse. Yeah. The last page. <laughs> They have something called eye candy, and it's a big magnifying glass like this with a light on it. It's very good for. It doesn't get into detail, 
but what it does say is uh, it gives you the Greek writing of it, which is hard to read. Uh, from the derivative of the base of 55067, with another number, means a crumb, a little bit or a morsel, a crumb. Mm -hmm. So, but looking up that scripture, yes, that was Matthew 27. What was that? What were they looking for? Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, you know, I looking back there. I to go back to calm. I was in a class on this many, many years ago, and basically. We had to do a lot of this type of thing in order to get familiar with it, because otherwise you walk away and next thing you know, you've forgotten and just know it's. We talked about like from going Luke 16. Luke 16, that was another scripture, yes. What is the crime in the faith? Hmm? What is the crime in the faith? Hmm. What is the crime in the faith? No, the the blessings, the blessings from the Lord. She was looking for healing, or what was she looking for? But she was saying, and it was not. Yep, she was looking for the healing. Yeah, healing. Demon possession. Is it in Matthew? It says the woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, "It is not right for to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs." Yes, Lord, she said, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Yes, he then Jesus answered, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. Your daughter is healed in that very hour. Yes. And that's because she wasn't Jewish and she wasn't from the old. So, but that led to her answer. And it's also in Mark and Luke. See, under crumbs, it's only got three scriptures, Matthew 15, 27, Mark 7, 28, and Luke 16, 21. But that's what you have, you know, and it's really worthwhile because you've got Greek and Hebrew dictionaries at the back of it. And you can't beat it. You can use Google and you can get stuff, and it could save you trouble but you get more here because you're getting getting the greek and hebrew dictionary you're getting other scriptures where it's listed you might get that on google i'm not sure I don't... thank you <laughs> well, <the> way... thank <laughs> you. okay um, so you you did get the gist of that and if you'd like to see a strong's there are besides mine there's three more on the table here uh, did you? Yeah. Thank you. You're okay. Bible dictionaries. Bible dictionaries. Well, the ones in Strong's is a small dictionary. There are others. Um, there are a lot of other ones. I brought two. And Vines is the most commonly used Bible dictionary out there, I think. If you talk to someone about a Bible dictionary, they'll probably be talking about a Vines. This is a Vines. It's much bigger than the normal Vines. This is, Vines is really Vine, Unger, and White, but this is Vine, Unger, White, and Nelson, which is just like a deluxe. Mm -hmm. And it, I don't know if you'd be able to find this out there, but it would be probably better than your regular vines, which would be like two thirds of the thickness. But uh, these are great. They have everything you'd want to see in a dictionary. They have the 
Greek, the Hebrew, probably even the Aramaic, you know, um, has, you could pass it around and look at it if you want, if you want to mm -hmm. see that. This one is Little Kittle. Little Kittle is the meat of a big set of Bible dictionaries called Kittle. Kittle is a 10 volume set. And this is a little bigger than one of the 10 volumes, but 10 of these is what Kittle's like. You know, it's like that. And this is another Bible dictionary. We'll start. I'll pass it in the room. They're great. They're great for getting in deeper. You know, when you hear a pastor up there getting in deep on something and getting into the words meaning and, and other scriptures and and the use of a, sometimes it's just the use of a word and understanding the depth of it. Like in the Hebrew class, where they even the, the letters are words, you know. I mean, that is there is such power in that, and it's such a you don't have that in any other language, you know. That is God inspired, and so. Understanding the meaning of the words is very good. Um, it's it, obviously it's it's vital if you don't understand the word that you're reading, you know. But, uh, and the Thompson, I'll pass this around too. This has this is a regular Bible, and in the left column, it has a number, and it'll say, "I'll take the top page." If no one turns the page, everyone will see it. There's number 695 next to Jesus the Messiah. And then next column is the scripture itself, are the Christ, the Son of God. And that is your, your whole thing. You have the number of the word, mm -hmm. and you have what it is, Jesus the Messiah, and you have the scripture, and you have the next verse, verse where you'll find that same thing. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. that particular use of the word that use of the word rather than a different use of the word it'll lead you to the next verse that has that same use of the word mm -hmm. so that's uh, very good this would be your deepest best but maybe the hardest to use when word study this is an interlinear bible this Bible has your Bible in English on the side, straight reading the, the this is, uh, I'm pretty sure it's King James, but it could be NASB, probably King James. You have your King James try to, over on the left, and then on the, your main column, we'll, we'll start with numbers, and that's all coded the Strong's. So every word, um, almost every word has a number or in Strong's Concordance. Then you have it in the Greek or the Hebrew, and then underneath that is the English. Now, it can be a little difficult to read that part because the Hebrew is read from right to left. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to have our words underneath the Hebrew, and then you're going to... This, this one is New Testament. This is four volumes. The first three volumes are Old Testament. They have them in single volume. In fact, I think there's one on the shelf here somewhere. But uh, so you'll see that you'll see the regular word, scripture, uh, like you read in the word, in word, the number, the yeah. form, and then the English. And that's excellent when it comes to word studies. There's a lot of depth of word study if you want it. You know, it's it's out there. And, well, you get into Bible study over all different kinds of reasons. You know, you could do a Bible study simply because you want to read the gospel and you want to read Matthew you know, or Mark or what, you know. Or you could do it by the book of Acts, the history of the beginning of the church, the birth of the church. Whatever your reason is, if you get into a Bible study with other people, these resources are great to use as a group. Um, 
can be a little distracting. One person wants to read this and the other person wants to just keep going in scripture. <laughs> but it's all for the same purpose. Okay. This is a Bible handbook. This is, I believe, the same Unger that's involved with Unger, Vine, and White for the dictionary. And this goes through the whole Bible, all the books of the Bible. It's small, but it doesn't go extensively. It's not like an encyclopedia, but it's very helpful if you want a Bible handbook. Um, there's a lot of those out there, too, or at least a few. Um, it's got maps and charts and so forth. Um, when it comes to commentaries, there are a ton of them out there. And commentaries, um, again, like the book over here says, that's a man's, what a man has come up with through his own study of the word. But some of these commentaries are really great. There's a lot of great commentators out there. This one I would suggest to someone who doesn't have a commentary at all would be the Bethany Parallel Commentary because it's three in one. You don't have to worry as much about having an... A, uh, you have three different this one has Matthew Henry Jameson Fawcett Brown and Adam Clark and they're big pages three columns and what it does is it allows you to not just see one opinion but you're seeing a few so you get a better idea if, there, if anything's questionable you have someone else to read I don't think you really have to pass that around but you yeah, you wouldn't want to lug these back and forth every day. When it comes to Bibles, we all have a preference. Sometimes it's just easy to read, like an NIV. I, I got an NIV. I got a bunch of gift and award Bibles many years ago, and I included the NIV because I had Hispanic friends that I just thought it would be easier for them to read. So that was my reason and for the NIV. The regular Bibles, like the King James, there is a concordance in the back of the Bible, which is very good. Yeah, mine. Um, mine it keeps it so simple that you know, when you want to understand and you look for a word. What yeah, a lot of them do. Yeah. But at least if you're going to get a new Bible, make sure it's a reference Bible. Because mm -hmm. it's so much better. You know, a cross-reference Bible or a chain reference. Now, I, I promoted the Thompson chain reference. I like it because of its your ability with studying word studies in it. But this is one that I did not know anything about two years ago. This is uh, Dakes. Dakes is what Bishop uses. And when I saw this, I was I was flabbergasted. It's it's wonderful. It's got so much reference in it, and so much. Um, it's it's just so much notes. It's called the annotated yeah, notes. And I'm gonna, gonna look at it first because you've been getting every day. Yeah. Dakes. There's a lot of good stuff in it. <laughs> yeah, you could. Well, when she's done with that, just grab it and pass it around, okay? Okay, here's another Bible, which is very unusual. And um, I think everybody here, if you've been a Christian a long time, you would remember uh, Jimmy Swigert. Oh, yeah. And he was a great preacher. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, what happened to him and with him and in the ministry and stuff was terrible. But, uh, this is called the Expositor's Study Bible, King James Version, Crossfire Edition. It's a reference. It's not a, really a reference Bible. This is a commentary and Bible in one. So it's Jimmy Swaggart's Bible commentary 
with the red being Jimmy Swigert's commentary and the black being the Bible. So this is a great Bible. Another one Bishop likes. In fact, I had this and put it down because I thought he was going overboard with explaining words like the and of, you know. And then Bishop's, Bishop loves it. So I took another look and believe me, I'm using this a lot more. I was say, I was, I was saved under Jimmy Swigert's uh, crusade. Oh, wow. When I came back into the church, uh, that's when I hooked up with watching Jimmy Swigert a lot. Jimmy Swigert's the crybaby. Yeah, he's sick. Yeah, he he sings good, good, and our pastor seems to love his songs. That's a square garden in a Jimmy Swigert meeting. <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> Okay, Bible Atlas, I mean, yeah, Bible Atlas is a good thing. A lot of people aren't interested in geography, but if you want to see a map of Israel, if you want to see the different trips Paul made, if you want to see the different the two kingdoms, Judah and Israel, if you want to see where the Ammonites or the Amalekites or the Philistines, if you want to see the territories, if you want to see in relation to Israel, how all these things are, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, and all that. Bible Atlas is good. It shows you the territories. It shows you even like things for the battles that Israel had, like AI and, and different places. And it it's, it's not a necessary, but it's just one of those reference books that can be useful. Um, knowing where the different churches are in Turkey, you know, they always called it Asia, but it's, you know, it's just, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. so I, I won't bother. Well, if anybody want to look at it. Yeah, I'm going to see it. Yeah. You can get them in smaller versions. That's a big, a big one. You can get them in giant print. You get them giant print? <laughs> um, I think Wait, mine is. Put it in giant print. It'll be so heavy. It won't be able to carry it. I mean, you have to have two people help you. Wagon. Yeah. You'll see it better, but man, it'll just cover your whole table. Now, this is one from off the bookshelves here. There's a lot of stuff right in this room. These strong concordances that are on the table. Um, this is Nave's topical Bible. This is a Bible not for reading straight through like you read the book of Corinthians. This is by subject. So uh, this it's a different Bible as far as that. I mean, it's all scripture, but it's, it's by subject. So I think I got a couple of these. One of these floating around. Anybody wants to look at it? Okay. You've got one of those. Okay, this goes on the shelf here. And let's see, let me think of I'm thinking about anything else. Let's see. Yeah, I can talk about some commentaries um, because I have a few. Um, if you're not interested in differences between divisions in the churches, you don't want to bother with Matthew Paul. He does have a lot more than just that, but he gets into a lot of that, and that, that that's the one I use the least. You know, it's just not a great subject. <laughs> I, I don't believe the church today is, the living church today is separate in denomination, I believe it's only separate because pastor is supported by his church 
and he can't lose his flock, he loses his income. You know, that's a that's a sad thing, but it's what keeps churches separate. Also, of course, those laws about taxing uh, churches that aren't under those tax codes can don't have to worry about preaching the truth, whereas others have to worry about what the government says. And if they say it's not nice to say the truth, then they have problems. And to my knowledge, a lot of the churches are under that circumstance, and it's very sad. Um, I'm going to get this stuff out of the way so we can... And we can get back into, we can go, so look over these pages 59 and 60. Remember 59 and 60 if you're using with the Strong's Concordance, because if you're going to use a concordance, if you're going to use a Strong's Concordance, this is going to come very in handy. You can understand everything. Um, Bible Dictionary at the bottom of 60, lists the words of Bible in alphabetical order and explains the meaning of each word. A Bible Dictionary is not the same as a regular word dictionary. A regular dictionary gives the meaning of words as they are now used. Bible Dictionary gives the definitions of Bible words as they were used in the original context of Scripture. There is a sample listing from a Bible Dictionary. Beard. It looks like it's pronounced bird. <laughs> With Asiatics, a badge of manly dignity in contrast to the Egyptians who usually shave the head and face. As a sign of mourning, it was custom to pluck it out or cut it off. The Israelites were forbidden to shave off the corners of the beards, probably because it was regarded as heathenish. And that's Leviticus 19.27. To compel a man to cut off his beard was to inflict upon him a shameful disgrace. That's a strong. That's that, that, that you can't even see it. You got to get a big neck to fight. Okay, so that was Bible dictionary. Now, following our recommended Bible dictionaries, Unger's Bible Dictionary. What I had was an Unger's, um, was an Unger's handbook, Bible handbook. Unger's Bible Dictionary by Merrill Unger and Zondervan's Pictorial Bible Dictionary by Merrill C. Tenney, or Zondervan Printing Publishing. Word study books go beyond the basic Bible dictionary and defining words used in the Bible. They provide Greek or Hebrew word and various meanings given to the same word. The word study book also provides the references in which the word is used. Here is an example from a word study book. Acts, from axine, and acts came to agumi, if that's the right way to pronounce it, that sound looks like a Greek word, to break its bound is found in Matthew 3.10 and Luke 3.9. The listing shows the Greek word tells it is related to another word, explains the meaning of the word, and tells where the word is used in the Bible. Following word study books are suggested. An expository dictionary, dictionary of New Testament words and an expository dictionary of Old Testament words, both by W.E. Vine and Ravel Company. And Bible Encyclopedia also lists various Bible subjects and words in alphabetical order and defines them, but it provides a more extensive discussion than a dictionary. Here is an example of a Bible Encyclopedia. I've been forgetting about being on Zoom. So this is an example of a Bible Encyclopedia. I don't know if you can see that very well. Uh, I can't hold the phone to it either. This was a class really to be here rather than mm -hmm. Zoom. But, yeah. um, okay. 
So the encyclopedia does well also, um, or this one does, and has the word begotten. It has the Hebrew pronunciation or, or spelling. Uh, it has the scripture references. It says the word in Greek, the word in Greek, and more references in the New Testament, and then gives the definition. And then gives gives a lot of yeah, it's, it's pretty good. There's a lot of information on it right there. And the following are recommended Bible encyclopedias: Wycliffe Bible Encyclopedia, and Zondervan Pictorial Encyclopedia. Okay, I don't have a Bible encyclopedia, but uh, it looks like they would be good too. Okay, Bible commentaries. A commentary is a book that provides comments about scripture in a Bible. It comments on Bible chapter by chapter and verse by verse. The commentary is helpful in explaining passages which are difficult to understand. But remember, this is one person's ideas as to what the scriptures mean. Commentaries are only opinions of man. This is why it is important that you study the Bible for yourself and not depend only on the comments of others. There are many different Bible commentaries. Some commentaries consist of one volume, which covers the entire Bible. Other com commentaries devote one book of comments to each book of the Bible. Suggested commentaries, Wycliffe Bible Commentary, Matthew Henry's Commentary. Now, like I said, there's a bunch of them out there, and I don't know. Uh, there's there's so much out there. If anybody likes to read sermons, my favorite commentary is actually done in sermon form. Um, and the Book of Romans, it's it's a fourteen volume commentary done in sermon form with about twenty something sermons per book. So it's really a wonderful we thing. To go to the doctor's point of, of us. So for me, that was wonderful. I literally spent a year reading a sermon a day and, and loved every minute of it. Um, Ephesians is also done that way. This is by Martin Lloyd-Jones. He was a pastor during World War II. He became assistant pastor to um, In, in in London, England, G. Campbell Morgan's assistant. Uh, trying to remember the name of the chapel. But anyway, he was from like 1945, 48, that period to 68, he retired and passed away 10 years later. But he did those two commentaries in sermon form. And Ephesians is an eight volume set a bit cheaper than the other, and but still expensive. It starts with the first book of Ephesians. The, the first chapter is one book, and it's all, it's filled with sermons on all the blessings in Christ, all the heavenly blessings in Christ Jesus. It's a wonderful book. When I was reading it, I, I got to a point where I felt, well, he's repeating himself. He's reading, reading the same thing in another sermon. But by the time I was done with the book, I wanted to get half a dozen of them to give the different pastors because I was elated with it, you know. And then the last chapter of Ephesians, the full armor of God, is a great chapter too. But I would recommend Rick Renner's Dress to Kill because he does a teaching on the full armor of God like no one else. It was wonderful. I love talking about them. <laughs> I love talking about them because. They're great. I have a lot of books, and you can talk to me about a subject that you might want to read a book on, because I have a lot of books, and I could probably turn you to somebody very good. Anyway, Bible Atlas we looked at, and it is, they have a few of them that they recommend, Compact Bible Atlas with Gazetter, 
published by Baker Bookhouse. That's a good Christian book company. Hammond's Atlas of the Bible Lands, uh, Wheaton, Illinois, Scripture Press. Um, Oxford Bible Atlas, that's probably good. Oxford University Press, Macmillan Bible Atlas, and that's Macmillan and Company. Those, uh, I don't know if anybody's really interested in the atlases, but mm -hmm. okay. Topical textbooks. Topical textbook is a book which organizes the Bible under major topical listings and gives the verses where these topics are discussed. Here is an example of a topical textbook. Gideon, call of by an angel, Judges 6, 11, 14. His excuses, Judges 6, 15. Promises of the Lord, Judges 6, 16. Angel attests to the call to by miracle, Judges 6. It goes on and on, but it's it's got, um, I don't think, I don't have a topical textbook, but this looks pretty good if you want to go by topic. Oh, we were going to start out by a song, but I think we've skipped it already. <laughs> and and I think I need to get away from that anyway. <laughs> but let's see. Okay, Nave's Topical Bible is very good. I've had that on a table a few minutes ago and passed it around, I think. Um, 20,000 topics with 100,000 Bible references written by Orville Nave and published by Guardian Press. Uh, the Zondervan Topical Bible was 21,000 topics. I guess they beat out Orville <laughs> with over 100,000 scripture references. The scripture references are very good for getting that. Bible handbooks, you saw the Unger's Bible handbook. Um, a Bible handbook is usually one volume summary of selected information about the Bible. It contains helpful maps, charts, definition, information on Bible times and summaries of the books of the Bible. A Bible handbook presents a general overview of the Bible. The following are good book Bible handbooks, Unger's Bible handbook, Erdman's handbook of the Bible. Okay, and the internet, of course. Uh, you know how to Google, <laughs> then you've got that. Uh, I like being able to Google something. It's sometimes very quick and easy. Mm -hmm. But I personally, when I read, I sit in a chair with a table on each side of me. And sometimes it's Bibles on one side and books on the other. And whatever I'm reading, if I have a notebook, I'm like, got it all right there. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's very nice. <laughs> um, it's a method far before internet. Yeah, what about it before that that's the method far before internet. Yeah, before yeah the either that or a nice big desk, you know. <laughs> but, uh, we're almost done. Almost time up. Uh, let's see. The self test. Um, no, probably won't remember the key verse without going back to look at it. The main uses of a concordance. Locate reference to a word, locate a specific test text, and find meaning of the word of a word. Okay. And this little list here, topical textbook. You can almost see the answers in the wording of the other side. Uh, four list topics of the Bible and scriptural references for them. Bible dictionary, like a regular dictionary, number two. Bible encyclopedia, provides general information on Bible background. And this is all kind of self evident it's it's good um so the, what this was all about is the use of the different books and there are many of them out there i suggested certain bibles i can suggest commentaries but uh you might want to look for yourself and see you could tell you could ask me what i think about it um that's okay <laughs> but uh I'm available for that. And next week we will read 
read chapter six for next week. And then we'll get back mostly into this text. Maybe we should end it with a song. Hand that out. Hand that that way. And that way. And there we go. This was very simple. I don't have to embarrass myself very much. <laughs> okay. Ready? Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would your evil of victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. I'm not saying very good. There's power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. That's a wonderful song because it's a wonderful truth. And it's power in our Lord whom we need and depend upon. And Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. So next week will be chapter 6. And hopefully, it'll be very good. <laughs> We've got a couple minutes left. Anybody want to, any comments or questions? Or... That is that there's so much information out there for all that you brought up today. This is because of Strong's Concordance and the Bible dictionaries. This that would be the the, the main things. Uh, commentaries and Bible handbooks and so forth are are good, are great. Um, but uh, I found by reading a lot of the really strong preachers from the past. Um, people that were quoted in, immensely, like A.W. Tozer, R.W. Torrey, R.A. Torrey. Um, I, 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 I love reading those books on the Bible. Um, there's, there'd be a subject that they've taken, and they're, they're just great books. You know, there's a ton of them out there. And if I had to make a list of the greatest people to read, Watchman Nee would be one of them. Mm -hmm. R.A. Torrey, A.W. Tozer. Um, I've got a lot of personal favorites that may not be the best, but um, there's a lot of them out there. And got a subject that you want to read on? Talk to me. I got a lot of books. <laughs> you know? I'm not going to ask anybody. Did, 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 did any of you all use anything to say about it? Do you have any of these dictionaries? Or... No? Extra help. Yeah, I, I'll go to the Concord, Concordance. Oh. And I've used on the internet, I've used Bible Gateway uh, mm -hmm. because you can type in some words and then they again, come yeah, up those words are amazing. I'm scriptures. afraid we're going to lose that one then because I see them illegalizing Christianity because the, the left, if they get into office this oh. time, I don't see much stopping. And the only thing we've got going for us is the Senate and the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. So if we don't make the presidency, at least we have to take those. Because they'll be outlawing us. Mm -hmm. They'll be burning Bibles soon. You know, it's it's horrible, but it's a reality. That's going to come down to the end. Right. And, I, and I'm not a technology person. Mm -hmm. you know, so that was just something that uh, sometimes when I really been searching for some like my this bible if i'm thinking of a word in the king james it doesn't always have that word in the yeah, nib yeah. so then i have to okay wait a minute I'll go there so the best thing to do is read your bible like ivan and i were talking yesterday 
you just keep reading repetition and, and reading. Uh, I'm getting some of these Thompson Chan references. I found an incredible price on them, and I'll be giving them to you. Yeah, I want you to have them. It's just really good. I was expecting some today, and they didn't get here yet. So maybe they'll be home when I get there. <laughs> Don't tell others about it, because they'll love to show up just to get home. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. To get one less than $30 is incredible, and I got them for like half that. So I just couldn't, I couldn't ignore it. What's that? I don't have that. It's my truth. I just got to turn this off, I think. Well, we can end in prayer. Would you like to end in prayer? Yeah. We just thank you for the blessing of this Bible study, Lord, and we thank you for Chris. And Father, we thank you that you know, as we absorb this knowledge, that we can only use it, Father. Father, 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 we just pray right now against this hurricane. Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you protect all of us, Father God, and keep us safe and harm, help give us wisdom and know what to do, Lord. And we trust you, Father, for services on Sunday that that's going to be back up. And we have some service and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, goodbye. I know a couple of people wanted to watch online, but this is not something you can, yes. you know, take three people to show them the book, you know, one to hold it, one to point it out. And... Yeah.